Welcome back to the Ortho Time Machine, where we explore the pivotal moments in orthopedic history. I'm Saqib Rahman, and today we're diving into the incredible journey of total knee arthroplasty, or TKA, a life-changing procedure for millions worldwide. In this episode, we'll focus on the remarkable contributions of Dr. John Insall, whose innovative designs and surgical techniques elevated total knee arthroplasty to the gold standard that it is today. From early prosthetic designs to complex revision systems, Insall's work revolutionized how we treat degenerative knee diseases. Join me as we unpack the fascinating evolution of knee arthroplasty, including the setbacks, breakthroughs, and the visionary leadership of John Insall. Our story begins in the late 19th century with early attempts to treat debilitating knee arthritis. In 1890, German surgeon Themistocles Gluck implanted the first documented knee prosthesis and it was made of ivory. Although groundbreaking, these early efforts faced high failure rates as you would expect due to infection and poor mechanical compatibility. So enter the 1950s and 60s. By the mid 20th century, hinge prosthetics like the Voldius hinge aimed to restore stability, but obviously as a hinge, it constrained the knee's motion. As we know, the knee is not a pure hinge. These devices, although innovative, often resulted in loosening and failure because they were too constrained. It was during this time that Dr. John Insall entered the field. John Insall was born in England and trained in the U.S. Uh, he joined the Hospital for Special Surgery, or HSS, in New York City. At HSS, he witnessed the limitations of existing knee replacements and committed himself to developing a better solution. So in 1970, Insall collaborated with bioengineer Peter Walker to refine knee prosthetic designs. And they began with what was called the duo condylar and then the duo patellar prosthesis. But soon they realized that a more anatomical design was needed. So this led to the creation of the famed total condylar knee, first implanted by Insall in 1974. The total condylar knee prosthesis was groundbreaking. It featured a posterior cruciate sacrificing design with a conforming articular surface, the anterior femoral flange, and a dome-shaped patellar component. It looks a lot like the knee replacements that we do today. It provided stability, improved range of motion, and closely mimicked the knee's natural kinematics, which again is not a pure hinge. There's rollback, there's rotation. So Insall explained his approach, quote, the knee is a complex joint. To achieve consistent outcomes, we had to design a system that respected its anatomy and mechanics, but equally critical was mastering the surgical technique." Unquote. Insall's rigorous focus on alignment and soft tissue balancing set new surgical standards that we continue to teach today as the foundations of knee arthroplasty. He introduced methods to to correct deformities through precise ligament releases and gap balancing, again, concepts that remain integral to the practice of modern total knee arthroplasty. Building on the total condylar knee, Insall and Walker developed the Insall Burstein posterior stabilized knee in 1978. This design featured a tibial post and a femoral cam mechanism to replace the posterior cruciate ligament action. So this helped to ensure femoral rollback and enhanced flexion stability. And this is the design you still see in many total knee orthoplasty components today. Dr. Norm Scott, a close collaborator of uh, Dr. Insall said that, quote, the Insall Bursting prosthesis became the benchmark for posterior stabilized design, offering superior stability and performance, unquote. So Install 
didn't stop there. He understood the complexities of revision knee arthroplasty because now these were going to need to be done as well. And in these cases, instability and bone loss posed significant challenges. And for those of you who do revision knee replacements, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so this led to the development of the total condylar constrained prosthesis in 1977. Later, that evolved into the insole bursting constrained condylar knee, or, or CCK as we commonly know it today. This system, the CCK, provided greater stability while preserving joint motion. This helped address issues in complex cases that you can think of like severe valgus deformities, ligament insufficiency, etc. Beyond implant design, Insall was a passionate educator. He co-founded the Knee Society. He co-authored the seminal textbook, Surgery of the Knee, which is now a cornerstone in orthopedic education. I mean, I've read it. It's on my bookshelf. Dr. Gil Scuderi, one of his protégés, reflected, quote, Insall's contributions extended far beyond the operating room. He was a masterful teacher, shaping the careers of countless surgeons, unquote. I can attest to this personally as well. As an orthopedic resident many years ago, one of the first outside courses I attended to learn knee arthroplasty uh, principles was the Insall Scott Kelly course in New York City. Total knee arthroplasty has a bright future, and we continue to build on Insall's legacy. Today, advancements like robotic-assisted surgery and patient-specific implants continue to refine total knee arthroplasty. But every innovation stands on the shoulders of giants like John Insall. Dr. David Fisher summarized, quote, Insall's principles of precision and patient-centered care remain the foundation of knee arthroplasty. His work changed the game, and we're all better for it, unquote. From rudimentary hinges to sophisticated life-changing procedures, the evolution of total knee arthroplasty is a testament to human ingenuity and the pursuit of excellence. Thanks again for joining us on this journey through the Ortho Time Machine episodes. In our next episode, we'll explore the rise of spinal instrumentation and its role in correcting complex deformity. Hit subscribe, leave a review, share with your friends. See you next time.